I know. I've, I've got my username, got my password, logged in, and every sort of logged in can hear you fine. And then after about 30 seconds, uh, it goes, thanks for uh, logging on to Blog Talk Radio and hangs up. Huh. They have really got to fix their system. I want to ask you something, because I know this call's got to be costing you money if you made it from a landline. Oh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. It's it's bloody problem. Not a problem. Okay, so you want to go ahead and try for the last 22 minutes to tell us about your book? and uh, do you Indeed, have yes. Yeah, yeah. Do you have Mr. Goff with you? I know you said you wanted him. I do indeed. Place. He sat right next to me. Uh, the gentleman who wrote the book is right next to me. Um, and as I'm sure you probably already told your listeners, and I know it gives a brief outline on, on the internet, basically a number of years ago, I'll try and keep it short because obviously we sort of run out of time, I, I was basically in a pub and I overheard a conversation and this conversation I overheard, as we often do, really interests me. It's sort of like you tune in. I think we all have like a, some people call it a sixth sense or ESP, but I think it's just that we can all hear, see things, uh, smell things. I think all these senses are normal. We can all do it to a great extent. It's just only if it interests us in this society um, do we tend to suddenly tune in. And I, I tuned in and I heard this conversation going on about pyramids and aliens and anti-gravity and time travel and all these things that your average your blogs on the street might say are kooky or rubbish or conspiracy theories. And it twigged with me. It was like a light bulb going on because I believed in these things because I was born on a circus, Royce, and uh, at the age of three and a half I was in the caravan and I remember this clearly. And I woke up and there was a, in, like a being near me that was about my size. So maybe 18 inches high, shall we say, a foot and a half high. And it scared the living proverbial out of me. I don't wish to swear, but it, it really did scare the living daylights out of me. And I hid under the quilt cover and... Some people to this day say that I was just dreaming. But since that age, from the age of four and a half onwards, I displayed in school remarkable abilities. I passed exams at levels quicker and higher than other people. I was at a very early age doing things that classified me here in England as a child prodigy. And I believe that I was visited at that early age and given something. What, I don't know. Or at least I don't think I knew up until reading this book and that encounter in the pub led me to getting to know this gentleman who we'll call Tom. Um, but that obviously is not his name. And he, his book contains some stuff that some people may think slightly weird, other people may think yeah, I know exactly where it's coming from, and in general, a lot of establishment, the establishment people who say there aren't aliens, there aren't UFOs, well, they'd say, well, it's dangerous and it, 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 it's not true. And you know, at this point, because we are so limited for time, you know, the best thing I really could do, Royce, and at some point I'd love to talk with you about hypnosis and the power of the mind, and all this, this entire book, I believe, does come down to mind power. I believe, you know, even UFOs are mind power. It's just other entities that have got more mind power than us at the minute because they're more evolved. Um, but I believe Tom's probably the best one to talk to you. So if it's all right with you, Rice, I'd like to put you on to him. Sure. Is that okay? Yeah, I'll put you on to Tom. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I was reading your book uh, the other day, the the copy that it, uh, Jonathan right. had sent me. Tell them about time, Tom. And this is yeah. some pretty deep material, and I thought maybe you'd like to uh, tell everybody basically, you know, what inspired this material. Um, we, it is quite deep, and I'll, I'll give you that. Um, and it, 
it's a little bit controversial because it's I mean regarding the the universe it, it it's um it's it's not expanding i i believe it's, it's an illusion right we, you're going into that in, in your book and you're also talking about the uh gravity but yeah go yes. ahead i didn't mean to interrupt no 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 uh, it's I've, I've always had an extremely powerful imagination right from the year dot and very little you know, when I was very little um, classic kids scared of the dark things would move um, and then I, I ideas would, would filter through and you know, as years went by I began to realize that maybe maybe these ideas were were actually being seeded but I, I kept it all that all to myself um, and and all these these ideas were advanced for 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 my years then, but they they they, they registered, they nurtured, and I just scribbled them down and kept them to one side. And it's only recently, very recently, that enough has been compiled to put to put it all together in in the form that now exists. And um, I, I think Alex and I were 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 programmed to meet up because. Um, he he found my conversation interesting. I, I was I was talking to another friend about it, and, and he happened to be in the vicinity. Um, and it, it wasn't a particular place that he frequented. He, he was only just coming in to, to try the place out, and and we met up. And then you know he, he asked he asked about the things I was interested in, and we realised we were on that plane, um, and it, we took off. Um, I think I can do something with this. Uh, I think it has potential. I was curious, yeah. how did you come about the name uh, uh, Ramblings of a Madman for it? Um, that was that was partly Alex's input. Um, he, he said, I don't want to be offensive, but uh, it, it sounds um, a little bit you know, eye-catching, but I, I modified it, um, which again is a little bit spooky because ramblings of madmen uh, can also be a reality of all matter. But Alex hadn't thought of that. I, I, exactly what it is. Uh, well, I, I, so I, um, I put that little input in. Yeah, it, it really yeah. got my attention because I'd actually read something online once that was very similar about yeah. the ravings of the mad Arab. Yeah. And like your book, it was uh, deep, very in a spiritual sense. Um, it dealt uh, with the deeper truths of uh, spirituality, which in turn it was another form of saying some of the same stuff that you were saying in a more scientific sense. Um, I, I, everything, uh, everything around us. Um, uh, even a rock is is a form of life. It, it exists. It's just the level of consciousness that exists in that rock is a lot less than exists in us because matter has been put together in a certain form that is us so that consciousness can have a, a greater uh, awareness of what's happening around it. Um, it doesn't have that much awareness as a rock, but it has a greater awareness in us. And there'll be the other forms where it has an even greater awareness until you get to, to the entire universe, which has the whole awareness. So, and regarding time travel, uh, I've been told, you could say, through inspiration, uh, as, as, as I've stated in the book, um, the inspiration... It, it, um, drops down from, I call them the, the inlet, I, I don't know the, where their real names or the real title, but I've given them that name, the inlet. Uh, and the secret of time travel is, you could say, is to ask to, ask to join the memory of the universe. Because everything is recorded, and if you step, in, step into it, you, you'll go along that memory flow. 
back to where you know, or forward to where which is isn't is a there's no back and forward anyway it's it's a, a different state of time it's like a lot of changing a frequency on a radio that's interesting um so the, the the notion of time travel as as actually physically going from what from from 2008 to 2115 uh, there's, there's, that, there's no movement. You're just you're going to up and up the frequency of 2115, or you're going down to the frequency of 1900. So these are like uh, different frequencies of consciousness. Uh, uh, different frequencies on the the universe memory. Of uh, the universe memory. Okay. Yes. Time travel. Time travel. We want to listen to time travel right now. I remember you had something uh, in your book. That, yeah. uh, if I remember correctly, was a description of what the universe is. Would you like to share that, or would that be giving away too much of the farm? Um, what the universe is? Um, I thought I could have remembered reading a, sort of like a yeah. description of the universe in the book. <laughs> oh, well, I've tried. Obviously, I mean, I, I, um, I've Perhaps tried to my wording little, is wrong. Yeah, I've, I've tried to add a little bit of humour. Uh, I didn't want the whole thing to be so deadpan, and um, and yet the humour uh, has got a level of thought to it, so you could you can see it under the under the humour. I I think you're referring to the frying pan analogy. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Well, that's. That was an analogy for the for the um, gravity particle, which which was the which is the basic substance of everything. It's so small that it, it's actually on the edge of reality, and it, it holds everything together. So um, I was in. A, if you think of water in a frying pan, and then you sprinkle talcum powder over it, the talcum the talcum powder is the matter that we see all around us. And um, the water in the frying pan is the submatter, you could say, is the gravity under, is the, that's holding everything together. Of course, it's one, it's one plane, of course. You have to, in reality, it's multidimensional, but we're just talking one sliver, sliver of reality, which is the surface of the frying pan. You turn the handle of the frying pan, and the particles of talcum powder or whatever that's floating on top will form into recognizable shapes that we see as spiraling galaxies. So the galaxies are actually floating, floating on a huge sea of sub-matter, which is the, 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 the gravity. I've called, it a, I've called it a zint, for one to, you know, I've called it the zint particle. Kind of like an interplay between uh, ether and matter? Yes, yes. Um, again, this is, is, is linked to time travel because the zinc particle remembers where matter was and can predict where matter will be. So if it wants to give a negative, negative charge to a, a particle that we recognize as a particle, it'll go to that particle, give it a negative charge, and then it'll zoom across trillions of miles instantaneously because time is, is irrelevant to it and give another particle a positive charge, and then come back and give it something else, a negative charge. And in that way, everything that we see around us gets charged. But it's, it, can be, it can go back a thousand years and give a particle, a thousand years in our reference, but to it, it's just going back, back along the CD disc to another track. If you can imagine time as being like, the, like a CD disc, uh, we, we, as a higher being, can jump tracks on the CD disc, but we're not actually traveling. We're, we're just simply jumping tracks. Or kind of like there's no physical body to actual travel, but, but the mind is, or the mind is just The mind, tracks. yes. Yes, yes. Regarding actually physically going back in, in time, um, I, I think I think a, me, a mental form of time travel would be would be safer um, in some respects, but I don't think 
actually physically going back in time is an impossibility because I don't believe anything is impossible. If, if the human mind can conceive it, then it's, it's possible. Well, I think science has pretty well proven that to us already, whether they know it or not. <laughs> I mean, so well, far, yeah, everything I mean, if, 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 we can, if the human mind can conceive something, um, it, it's, it, then at some point, or if circumstances fall together, then that can become a reality, it, given the, neg the negative pushes. To, I mean, some ideas might just get left by the wayside because they didn't have the right impetus then well some some um some come to fruition. But I All think right. it's possible to send to, to physically send, yes, uh, something back in time. That's um obviously extremely advanced technology to do it because uh, because uh, technically you'd be the two particles will be existing at the same time because the particle in me, anatomy in me, is a, in yourself, is, is a few million years old, hundreds of millions of years old. It's just that it, it's travelled down and, and got wrapped up in us. But it, at some point in the past, it must might have been part of a mountain or a tree or a butterfly or so, um, something. But now it's in us. We, we're constantly changing. Um, so if you went back in time. You'd be taking those particles back with you, so wherever you stopped, those particles theoretically could all, would already be in existence. That would be a, a little bit of a problem regarding physical time travel. You, you'd, you'd be two particles would be existing. Oh, we got a caller calling yeah. in. Can you hang on just a second? Yeah. Caller, you're on the air. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, how can we help you today? Well, this is actually um, DJ AD's wife, Jade. <laughs> oh, hi, Jade. I saw you in the chat room. Yeah, I decided to call in because what I had to say was, you know, kind of lengthy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm totally with that whole thing. Whatever it is you conceive is your reality. But the reason why, you know, we're all one singularity, of course. But because we're different, that's what gives us our identity. So we're still synced up in the mind somewhere in the great hive, you know, as some people call it. But that's the only reason why you can explain why some people believe they can fly and some people can't is because of the, the condemning of the mind, the conditioning, saying that there are rules. Even when you die and go somewhere else, there are these rules as opposed to us opening the opportunity to ourselves to really want to explore and create that universe to see the other possibilities. Because we, even unbeknownst to us, when we have, you know, out-of-body experiences in our sleep and everything, we create a universe of rules. So Would I just like? thought it was kind of, you know, interesting and I wanted to see what, you know, you guys felt about that. I was just fixing to ask our guest because he'd like to comment on that. Uh, that's uh, that, 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 that. I found that extremely interesting. I think, I think uh, the the lady there, uh, we're, on, we're on a similar wavelength, definitely. Um, I like that touch when you, you described a, a singularity. Yeah, uh, um, I think I, I think I know where, where she's coming from with that. Mm -hmm. uh, everything I, I everything is a sing a, everything a is a singularity. Sense. Hello, yes. Yeah, yes, well, I was still here. What were you saying, host? No, oh, I, I was just saying I'm still here. I, I think we're accidentally talking all over each other here. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, no, I was just curious because I never really got to discuss the topic with anyone else. Um, I try with, you know, my peers, but, of course, their mind is not that evolved. It's just questions of, you know, like I'm a fond believer of this. If you have an out-of-body experience, because you have set up a rules and limitations for yourself, unbeknownst, you will go to a common place. You will go to a place where you see people, not your mother, not your granny or anything like that, but you will see a place of people who are alive and kicking but are all asleep and chose to come to this particular place because you were all on the same wavelength. You know, it comes into the same thing about turning the radio dial you're all on that same wavelength, so you're able to be conscious of one another. Only during sleep, though. 
But, like, the only thing I feel that can change as far as your reality when you are asleep is the thoughts and positiveness of, like, what you project for yourself to change in the real world. Because when you are sleeping and sending out this amount of energy, the universe will definitely, definitely respond to that and open opportunities as soon as you open your eyes, you know. Everything else will kind of be taken another course because you had the thought of it. Like, there um, is always a saying, there is no new words. It's all about how you say it. And I just think it's yes. the same way that affects your life. There are no new paths. It's just all how you design that path. Kind of like Ecclesiastes said, there's no new thing under the sun. Yes. But um, I thank you guys for listening to my opinion. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I'm no, no, thank you for stating it. No, I, I, I found that very interesting. I, I like yes, I liked it. I liked it. Um, the 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 astral the astral travel bit. Um, uh, yes, um, and I think in in dreams in dreams we it's the mind. It's the mind having having a go at creating, creating another reality for itself. It's like a play, so it it creates it creates a reality um, aside from the 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 greater ma- massive dream that we're all in now. Mhm. But it comes to the point of oh, am I alive or am I asleep? <laughs> I've had some of those moments. I've woken up and I'm like, okay, am I really out the dream this time or? Oh yes. What's going yes. on? <laughs> oh yes. Oh, also, I just find it so fascinating. Uh, I hate to interrupt on you there, uh, Jade, but yeah. I wanted to give uh, Tom here a real quick chance to tell all the guests how to how they can get a hold of this here interesting book because it was really fascinating to me. And there's only one minute remaining, so I wanted to try to shoot right. that in real quick. Oh yes, goodbye, you guys. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Oh, okay, I, I think I think for that I think I better ha- hand over to. Um, to, to Alex here, okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, one of the yes, okay. Can. Okay, go ahead. Hi, Royce. Hi. Uh, right, the book is actually going to be out on Amazon um, and all online retailers by the 13th of August. However, when it goes out there, it's going to be because there's a lot more than what we sent through to you, um, Tom. I did a lot more, so it's actually going to be like twice the size now. Uh, when it goes out there, it's going to be sort of like 20 sterling UK, $40 American. However, for listeners of your show and your podcast and your online, if they email us on paranormal at magicalguru, M-A-G-I-C-A-L-G-U-R-U dot com, then I will send them a private link whereby they can download it as an e-book for just five dollars, two pound fifty sterling, um, and that will also include illustrations and stuff. That it'll be twice the size of what I sent to you on preview, because you can't stop writing, basically. Marco's saying five dollars is a good deal. Okay, everything else that's on here now is no longer streaming. It's going to be archived. Um, I was telling them because they were asking me to extend the show that uh, mm-hmm. that this is costing money. It's an overseas call, and I, I know you said... I'm not bothered. Worries. I don't care about the cost of the phone call. I want to spread the message for Tom, as we know that's a pseudonym, but he wants to... Because um, he doesn't want to fall into the trap of being seen as... Either A, a madman, or B, the genius that I personally believe that he is. Um, Because history shows us that people who um, sort of rock convention and let people know things that make the mass populace free become victims. Um, But I'm not bothered about that because I've always done my career that way as a hypnotist and that's why I became sort of the prism for 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 Tom and um you know the the so many, time travel. Right, listeners, those people who are listening now. You don't have to not if you're driving. Do not do this if you're driving. Do not, I repeat again, do not do this if you're driving or if you're ironing 
or using any electrical equipment that could be dangerous. But this 30 second exercise, this is time travel, the way I see it. Close your eyes as long as it's safe for you to do so. Okay. Close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in through your nose and then out through your mouth. And continue breathing deeply in through your nose and out through your mouth. And become aware of the fact that you can hear my voice. And you know where you are, so you know you're safe, calm and secure. And think of a time when you were younger, that when you felt really, really good and fantastic. Doesn't matter what age it was. Even if it was only in your own mind. And if you can't think of one straight away, just make one up. It doesn't matter. But the point is to feel, notice how good that feels. Notice how good that makes you feel. Notice how you almost feel like you're getting a sense of energy inside you. Energy. Key point. Notice that energy growing stronger. Brilliant. And then in your own mind, because your mind can do whatever you want, just imagine before you were born. Imagine floating back. Imagine in your mind's eye you're on a magic carpet, like from Aladdin, the Disney movie. And you're floating back in your mind, okay? And imagine in your mind's eye you're looking down on the map below and you can go wherever you want, anywhere you want in the world, any time, any place, but in a way that feels calm, safe and secure for you. And it will be. I'm going to count from one to three. On the count of three, you'll be there. One, two, three. Whatever you've got in your mind's eye now, listener, see it. Now, you might want to rationalize it and think, oh, this is just imaginary. But just turn the volume up. Turn the color up in your mind like on a TV screen. Turn up the feelings. Notice how much better that feels. You can feel it for real. Okay, this time I'm going to count backwards from three down to one because I'm not with you in person, so we need to do this quite rapidly. So when I count from three down to one, on one, when I click my fingers like that, when I go on now, you'll be back to where you are here and now, and then and only then, then and only then, I'd like you to open your eyes. So on three, nice deep breath in and out. Look around, turn the volume up. Notice how good it feels. Turn the brightness up. Turn the contrast up. See that image, that image of the place that you decided to be in the past, before you were even here physically. Because that's your new reality now, at that moment in time where you are. Two, you're starting to come back to the here and now. The here and now being the reality as you are now. But with a renewed sense of confidence, optimism, feeling really good inside. Feeling better than you did before. But being able to remember those feelings, whatever you took from that experience. On one, just open your eyes. Everyone, you can open your eyes. The moment it feels right for you, calm, safe and secure, you can open your eyes. And realize that when you go to paranormal at magicalguru.com, M-A-G-I-C-A-L-G-U-R.com, paranormal at magicalguru.com, email us and you can get the book for just $5 with additional bonuses. I'm going to put you back to the author. Thank you. Hello. Okay, I'm still here. Yeah. yeah. Can can I um, can I just leave leave with one thought? Okay. Are you still here? Yes. Yes. Oh, that was very yeah. interesting. He kind of got me to thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, uh, you know, regarding what happens when we when we pass away. Um, where were we before we were born? It's the it's a similar cycle. We we go back to where we were before we were born. You know, you kind of stop and think about what he was talking about. If you was to close your eyes and dream yes. of a time or visualize a time in your past that you've already relived. You know, in a sense, you really are in your mind traveling back to that time. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of people don't ever stop and think about it in that sense or that context, but. If you stop it, it thinking about it, you can see how you are. Yes, well, if that if that technique was was refined and enhanced to perfection, um, and completely uh, eliminate the influences around you, the you you would you would go back in you would go back in time in, in your mind. Which your mind is where the real you is at. Yes. Uh, and also with, through your mind, you, you'd lock onto that track I, I mentioned earlier of, the, of 
with, with the, the track of the universe, the general track of the universe, you'd lock onto it through your mind because your mind is part of the universal mind. Um, it's you, just a tiny fraction of it, so you'd be asking to to log on to the highway. Kind of like the information superhighway, the internet. That's yes, the, yes, the, the, the uh, universal memory highway. I kind of described it as um, if you had a big old body of water and you yes. took a half a cup out of that, took a coffee cup and dipped a half a cup or a cup out of it and, and set that up on the table, well, you'd still have the same water in two separate places. Even though they're now separate, they're still the same water. They've just been separated. That's interesting, yes. That, that's a good analogy. That's very good. Yeah, I like that. Yes. And, um, and you know, I think in your book, that's kind of what you're trying to, you know, point out to people, isn't it? <laughs> um, coming at it from a slightly different angle, but the, you, um, that analogy is is similar, um, a similar way of thought, uh, but coming from a, another side of the track. But I like that. Yes, that that, that is that's pretty that's pretty close. The, yes, I like the cup of water from the the ocean, and another cup of water from an ocean a bit further away. It's the same ocean but separated. Um, and then the separation yeah. is only illusion because the moisture in the air still has it connected. Nice one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But everything's linked. That's that's it. I mean, you and I are linked now. We're speaking, but we're also we're also linked in other ways. The, there's an energy field uh, between us. That's why we're speaking. It had to be. We've, we've had some glitches, uh, but it, it came together because all these ideas that have been filtered filtered through me since 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 I was young, uh, finally crystallized into a unified form instead of being little random ideas and, oh, no, you know, just little dreamings and stuff, and it's, it's, it's all coming together. Colin, let me back go and say, anyone who holds it, by the way, with that email book, yeah, um, if you go and find, you know. a £10 email. Sorry, Rice, I, I just wanted to say, what I said before about if you email paranormal at magicalguru.com, uh, we'll give you a private link. Not only will we give you a link where you can get it as an e-book for five dollars, but we'll give you a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you don't think that the contents are worth like ten times what you paid for it, then we'll just give you your money back because you'll be paying by PayPal or something online. And you can we'll give you your money back. And I think, you know, that, that, that's how much I believe in Tom's uh, work. I've read it and it ties in so much. I believe it is the power of the mind. I believe that everything, our reality is what we make it. And that was what we want it to be. And what we... Pardon? What, Rice? You said that email address was paranormal at guru? Magical guru. M A G I C A L. Guru.com. Um, at magic. I want to put this on a Word document because right, when I get it, talking, right. I'm going to uh, add it to the archives with this here so that. Um, All right. Okay. In that case, it's so. In that case, it's paranormal. Uh, uh, as in your radio station, Royce. At magical uh, M for mother A G I C A L. G for guru, oddly enough, U R U dot com. Yeah, got it. And if people email us and mention your radio show, then we'll give them a private link. They can get the book and the additional bits that Tom's done in the past few weeks, bizarrely, uh, for just five dollars. And I'll give them a money back guarantee. Um, because. I read it, and it, it, it really did blow my mind. Unfortunately, because of the glitches, we've only been able to scrape the tip of a massive iceberg. 
but you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna sign off. There's no rush. We don't have to go, but I'm gonna sign off by saying there's very little else I can say other than I was a non-believer in the paranormal and stuff like that, and I was a non-believer in it even more. I'd been visited by this being, shall we say, when I was young, because at that time I thought it was normal. And when I did eventually say it to somebody, they said I was weird, and I got bullied over things like this. Um, and anyone listening, if they want, they can actually go to MySpace, uh, the MySpace website, dot myspace.com forward slash Magical Guru, and join up with me as a friend, and you can get download my autobiography, and it does include in the uh, aliens and stuff that people say are weird, but I don't even like the word alien. I, I think a better phrase is something like somebody from a different country, because <laughs> you know you could say that somebody who's from England, I could be an alien to you in theory. Um, and on that note, I'm going to hand you back to the author because, you know, this book is his and I believe in it and that's why I'll give a money back guarantee. At some time in the future, I'd love to talk to you about things like Path Life Regression Royce um, on, on a one-to-one, -one, but hypno-wise. But at the minute, I'm going to I, hand I would you back to Tom. I would love to hear about what oh, I want to why... You are, mate? I said I'd love to hear what I was, uh, what kind of past lives I've had. I'd love to do that with you, and then you know, either a I'm gonna have to we're gonna have to have a trial run when we're not on air and get this bloody computer at my end sorted, or bugger it, it doesn't matter. I don't I, I I don't mind making the phone call. Let let let's schedule something on past lives. Let's do something on air. Let's get people involved. The, the things we can do and get everyone to experience the past lives. But well, for now, thank you very much. I'm going to pass you back to the author who, however long you want to talk to him, really should have the last word. Because the guy, you know, I've called it ramblings of a madman. But like he said, I believe it's all true. So actually, I think he's just a genius. So I'm going to put you back to him, Rice, and thank you. Uh -huh. Hi. Hey. Yeah. Um, I wasn't aware you'd switch people on me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um strange but I, i've never i've never seen a ghost or anything I, 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 they exist um they uh they're, they're not they're not they're not supernatural like they're all part, it's all part of nature but i, I have had one experience i can just tell you quickly um i'll I'd probably be in my late teens um uh, i was with my parents in a terraced house there was yards at the back and um, this particular evening i heard some scratching from a direction further down the, the yards uh, just sounded like a dog scratching in the yard until I realized that from that direction they didn't have a dog. Um, so I thought, well, maybe they're looking after a dog for somebody. But the scratchings came at a certain time every evening, which would be about 1 o'clock in the morning or something. And to get a long story short, it went on for, for a little while, um, and then it gradually started to get closer, and I began to suspect what this was. Um, and it started to sound like it was in the yard next door to us when I knew for a fact they had three cats. And when it started to get that close, um, I, you know, really began to think, I think I know what this is. And the evening when it, it, it appeared to be scratching it in our own yard is when, is when I bought a very small, plain, solid silver crucifix and chain and I had it blessed and put it on the um, the bar of the window frame, and I never heard it since. <laughs> uh, it's strange. <clears throat> Do you ever stop to think that things that are considered are supernatural? It's really not so much that they're supernatural; it's just that they're not understood. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Sorry, sorry. I said, um, you was yeah. making mention of the fact that you didn't think ghosts were supernatural. I, yeah. think, I just wondered how many people might have stopped to think that things that are considered supernatural aren't really supernatural so much as just they're not understood, so they're considered that. It's just a label that's put onto something they don't understand. 
I, I fully I fully agree. I mean, that the, the, the one time the lightning was considered supernatural, the gods were angry. Now we know it's just a discharge of electricity. And and I think there will come a time when uh, oh the house is haunted. Um, no, no, no. You know, it's, oh, we've we've got holographic transdimensional interference. Oh, right, okay, get, get you know, we'll have to we'll have to get somebody in to get rid of it. It's like we said, we've got mice. <clears throat> we've got holographic transdimensional interference. I got to tell you, I really liked your lava lamp lamp analogy that you were using in your book. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And it you, really think that, kinda, you think that works? You think that works? Yeah, I think it works, but it's uh, something that I think a lot of people um, are gonna they're gonna have to get involved in quantum physics to understand. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, I I think I got uh, uh, you know for me uh, yeah I can see where you was coming from, but then too I've been studying quantum physics for a few years online. But I was wondering about if the average layperson would, uh, they'd have to uh, probably stop and think about it. Well, I, I've never studied quantum physics. I just think. Um, really? Yeah. I've never, well, that's, you, that's you, thought, you thought because... I studied quantum physics? Never. That's fascinating because, you know, that analogy... It reminded me of Einstein's analogy with the train and the ball. Yes. So, you know, if you've never studied quantum physics and you're doing analogies that are equal to Einstein's, that's pretty impressive. Oh, well, I'm, I've, I've, no, I've, I've never, never studied quantum physics. I can say, no, everything, everything that... particle physicist. Brian Cox? Yeah, he's got a great website. And I've heard of David Wilcox, and he's got a real, uh, you know, no, some uh, good articles out, but I've never heard of Brian Cox. Yeah, um, doc, Dr. Brian Cox. He, he was, um, he was at one time... Uh, Manchester, England. Yeah, Manchester, England. Yeah, Manchester University, England. Um, he was at one time one of the uh, members of the the rock group Dream. Um, the big hit was uh, things are only going, going to get better. Um, well, he he um, he was um, emailed the the, the book. Um, we were hoping to get a little bit of feedback from him, but his his PA. Um, I gather it won't. Oh, right. Apparently he has looked at it, but he, he's, uh, he, didn't want to, he didn't want to get involved, basically. It's um, too controversial. Um, it's too controversial. Okay, yeah. A lot of people don't like to get into controversy because it's too co uh, confrontational. Yeah. Um, but you, you, you find that surprising. Um, what we were just mentioning earlier, but it's it's all like I said. I've always had this this ultra imagination, which was a great problem when I was a kid. But now it's under control; has been for quite a while, um, and it's all it's all come to this particular moment in time. This focus, oh, with the help of Alex. Um, um, I think I think it's just a, a natural development, a natural stage that it had. It could not stay. It, it could not stay where it was any longer. It had to. It had to go out. Right, you couldn't keep it bottled up any longer. Um, it's a great, yeah. It's a, in a way, it's a, to reach that point, uh, but I think uh, I think the flow, the underlying flow of fate, for want of a better word, uh, just uh, propelled it along. Because 
it, it, I think the whole the whole concept has developed its own energy um, to 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 help this along as it was like I have to be you know and this needs to happen it, it, I, I need to be the whole the whole concept that I, I put in the book right well um, you know the the kind of material that you put in here and the level of depth that it has for you to, not to be somebody that studied quantum physics or anything I would think that your your mind has just always been kind of like Einstein's in the effect of he looks at things around him, or say like Isaac Newton does, and you know it, it starts to think about that from a different perspective than most people would. Yeah, I've always been like that, but I mean, it, of course, when I was a kid, you can't understand it. You think you're wacky, and tr you try and shove it to the back of your mind because people, kids around you, you're, ge you're geeky, and you get, oh, it's that wacky kid again, you know. Um, He's always, oh, yeah, you, you let it out when you're a kid and share stuff like that when you're a kid, you get made fun of. Exactly, well, that's what happened. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I, and so you kind of write, uh, I, I don't want to get, I don't want to get looked at, I don't want, I want to be one of the kids that are, um, so you suppress it. But when I, by the time I got to my late teens, uh, I didn't, I didn't suppress it. I thought, well, no, this is me. This is, you know, uh, this is the way I am. Wherever these ideas are coming from, I don't know. Just let let them go. Let let them let them let them come through, and I'll just sc scratch them all down, scribble them all as they came, and I just say, right, okay, I'll say, I like that one. I say, thank you, thank you, wherever you are. I like that one, and then it just it just piled up and piled up and piled up until we've got to this present point. Um, uh, I'm you know, a mature guy now, uh, and it's flowered. You know, it sounds to me like your mind is just uh, geared differently than most people's. Just made to, designed to think in a different fashion. Rather than, you know, going with traditional book knowledge, it, uh, it has its own form of analysis. Uh, I mean, the, 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 um, the concept that you can't go faster than the speed of light, uh, I mean, a statement like that is, well... They used to say that you couldn't go faster than 45 miles an hour when, when steam trains were first invented. The, the, the human body would shake apart. Um, they used to say that? Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Boy, has that been proved wrong? Exactly. So when I hear a statement like you can't go faster than the speed of light, I almost instantly think, well, that's wrong. Of course you can go faster than the speed of light. The speed of light compared to the universe is snail's pace. I was noticing that you uh, said in your book that the uh, light doesn't even move. It's stationary. It's the uh, gravity that, that is moving the light. Well, um, yeah, that's in the book. That's yeah. kind of like similar to saying you got a peanut in your hand. It, it doesn't move. It's stationary. You put it on a conveyor belt, which would be gravity. Hence, you got the conveyor belt moving the peanut. That's a good analogy. Yes. Um, but there's one thing that's quicker than quicker than light. Thought. Now I think that's perhaps the quickest thing there is. Reminds exactly. me of an old joke I once heard about the dad that asked his boy what was the quickest thing he could think of, and uh, the boy uh, had uh, told him that the, he figured it would be thought because you could think one thing one minute and another thing the next minute. And then the next day, he's hanging a picture, and the dad comes in, and the son says, do you remember when you asked me what the quickest thing on uh, the in the world was, and I told you it was thought? Well, while I was hanging this picture, I hit my thumb with a hammer, and I found out real quick what was really the fastest thing, because I did something before I thought, and I don't want to put a four-letter word out here. I'll let your yeah. mind, uh, your imagination fill in the <laughs> gap. Yes. <laughs> Well, the the, the um, well, uh, like I say, the 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 level, the, the conscious level of the the aura, the conscious aura around the planet um, is in need of of a little bit of a gee up, um, and I think in my little way, this might give little little extra positive 
energy into the general thought aura of the planet because it, it, it will, I mean, all being well, it will plant seeds of ideas in, into, and if that, if that, all that it does is if somebody thinks, oh, yeah, hmm, that's, that's interesting, then it's done its job. You know, I think uh, you probably realize that a lot of people that haven't got your book realize, and I've known this for some time, is that um, thought has come before anything else that ever uh, came in this earth. You know, a car never came before thought. A sofa never came before thought. Everything that you do has a thought in it first, so thought is always the first thing there. Yeah, that, that's that's why it's the it's the ultimate fastest thing in existence. It can be it can be across the entire universe instantaneously, and nothing can exist without it. Exactly. And then people say you can't describe God, but uh... <laughs> well, I think the if, if the if the scribblings, the ramblings, or whatever you want to call them, if they, if they help, if they, if they if they help a little bit of change, if, if give somebody a little bit of inspiration, then it's, that's that's it. That's, it's, that's why that's why it's been allowed to flower. And well, I'm I, hope, I hope it can do that. I hope it can do that. I was going to say, I'm definitely going to do my part to help you get your book out. And Thank you. When you get it up at Amazon, when did y'all say it was due to hit Amazon again? When did, when did you, Alex, again? Amazon. Oh, Hi, Rice. She's just giving me the phone. Uh, you'll be able to get on, uh, on Amazon.com or most um, internet uh, book sites from sort of 13th of August onwards. However, if you email uh, paranormal at magicalguru, M-A-G-I-C-A-L-G-U-R-U dot com, we'll send you a private link where you can get it as an e-book for just $5 with additional stuff that won't be in the uh, print version. Right. So save your money, um, so to speak, and get more information and uh, email us. Well, I'm going to pass that link around in all my groups so that people can get it. But I was also going to, when the time comes, add the um, Amazon link later on. Cool. Well, I'll email you that, Royce. Of, of course I will. Um, it will be up there. For those people that prefer print uh, editions, you'll be able to get it from about 13th of August onwards on Amazon. That'll be the day um, after my birthday. <laughs> Make it a birthday present to me. <laughs> that's biz Your birthday's on the 12th of August. Mm-hmm. I'm the 13th, Royce. That's bizarre. That's the we're fellow Leos. We're both Leos. This is meant to be. Well, bizarre. I'm going to be hitting 49. Well, I'll be, I'll, I'll be turning 33 this year. But, uh, in this physical incarnation, that is. I'll be hitting about... 49,000 years in reality, but obviously that comes down to what you believe. <laughs> um, well, I don't really keep track of uh, Earth years until birthday time comes around. Yeah, well, you have to do that because it's an excuse for meeting the family and feeling good and feeling fantastic and all that kind of stuff. Um, well, it, well, it should be. It, the, it should be. Some people fall into the trap of thinking, well, the birthday, God, I'm getting older. No, you should focus on the positive and be aware of the fact that, you know, you've been here for thousands of years anyway, so another year ain't going to bloody matter. Enjoy it. You're going to be here for another 10,000 years. You might get buried in the ground or burnt, but, you know, you're still going to be connected somehow to those that you love. Maybe well, not in the way like, people uh, get are buried in the ground and burned to look forward to. <laughs> cool, yeah, exactly. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you're buried, you rot away, but you become part of, positively, you become part of the ground, you become part of plants that grow. It carries on forever. If you're burnt, you become fire, it becomes smoke, it goes up, it becomes moisture, it becomes... There's no end to anything. And having read Tom's book, um, you, you know, that is of the belief, and I truly am, that nothing ever ends. He can't do. And nothing can ever be perfect, because if it was perfect, it would end. Um, 
And that's really as bizarre and paradoxical as it sounds. It makes sense when you read Tom's book. Yes, it yeah. will still raise questions in your head. Of course it will. But the questions that are positive, the questions that will empower you, the questions that will make you feel better, things that will help you in life, and, well, I say in life, on this incarnation, on this planet. Because life never ends. That's true. And... You know, I, 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 can I just say again to the listeners, it, those people who are still on that run earlier, I really apologise. For some reason, we had a massive uh, screw up with the computer. We could hear Royce. We could hear, we could even hear, uh, listen, but we just couldn't talk. So in the end, yeah, we really should have made a test run yesterday. That would have been the best thing. At least oh, that way we, we would have known yesterday yeah. that we was going to have this problem. That's true. Oh, stupid me should have noticed there was a telephone number on the web page earlier and just picked up the phone. But there you go. So I apologize to you and I apologize to your listeners. And must, we will not let this awesome. happen again. <laughs> so, you know, um, at some time in the future when you'd like to perhaps... Get your listeners involved online, ringing in and doing a sort of a past life regression thing. Fantastic, and we'll make sure it happens right. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to say it, but thank you, Royce. I really appreciate it. I'll email you tomorrow, but I'm going to give the last word to the author. So I'm going to put you back to Tom. Okay. Uh, Royce? Okay, hey, Royce? Tom. Yeah, I really appreciate the um, the time given to the statistical gleanings. Um, and... Let's well, hope. I appreciate you being on my show. I really do. Oh, I, I right. really appreciate getting to talk to people that are into things that are deep, that are into quantum physics and the, you know, basic reality. Because, I mean, it's just not something people talk about much. Right. Now, this had to be. We, we've, we've had some negative vibes, but it, 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 we, we broke through. We broke through. Um, so the positive vibes won. Um, that's what it's all about. It's just seeding, seeding a few positive vibes in the hope that it will flower and and keep a certain amount of truth alive. Well, I think we've made the most out of us. Yeah. What started out slow. <laughs> yes, we, did, we certainly have. It, we, we, yes, definitely. <laughs> and definitely. I got we got, we got, we got though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're a very <laughs> unique man. <laughs> Thank you. That, that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Thank, thank, thank you. Um, and, well. But I'm going to go ahead and call a wrap on this show. We've been on for okay. an hour now. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, yes, and I appreciate that. I'm going to get the word out, and I, I'm going to be looking yeah. forward to Jonathan's email tomorrow. Right, okay. All right, thanks for coming. Okay, um, and uh, the email. Yep, uh, Alex will be... E emailing and uh oh right right um oh right uh, you're going to get a signed copy Royce <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. okay uh, okay uh, right um, everybody everybody thanks for listening in I hope, um, hope yeah a lot being... of people tell me that they enjoyed the show and one guy even made Ex something excellent. in his favorite so oh so right I think you made an impression okay. and. Marco said he's he's going to probably buy your book. Right. Well, like I say, that's the that's the little the little bits of positive thoughts going out. Then it's 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 that's what it's all about. That's 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 why I'm here. That's why I'm yep. here. That's that's why all these whole things come together. It's just just keep that little like a seed of inspiration going. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. And we'll talk Cheers. to you later. All being well. I'll be well. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. There are so many reasons why I got into teaching. One of the best things is the light bulb moment. When you see a pupil suddenly understand something, that's really, really special. Every child is so full of potential, and the thing that makes me proudest to be a teacher is seeing them realise what they are capable of. I don't think any other job can give you the same satisfaction. That's why I chose to teach. 
you could get £26,000 tax-free to train, search, apply to teach. Selected subjects only, subject to eligibility.